Knowing your must-haves as a consultant are extremely important in the success of your work. There are a lot of things that I learned the hard way as a nonprofit consultant that started as a grant consultant solely. And some of the things that I've learned over time, I have learned to be very specific on and not waver on at all. I'll give you a few examples. Now, everybody's gonna have to come up with their own things as you just determine what you do or don't wanna do, what you do or don't like to do, what causes you more trouble than it's worth, that kind of thing. But for me, when we write grants for clients, our name never shows up on the application. So clients understand, we'll be writing the application, you'll be the one that submits it, you'll be the one that has those conversations with the program officers at the foundations, and so that when there are questions about the application, the foundation is calling the organization. The foundation isn't calling me because I don't work in that organization. Heck, I might not even be employed with them after the grant is submitted, right? So I need my clients to have an intimate working knowledge of the grants that we submit, what's in them, the questions they may get asked, the questions they need to be having with, or the questions they need to be asking to foundations and all that type of stuff. So my name, my company name, and my consultant's names don't show up on those applications. That's one must have for me. A second must have for me is we need, now this is for state and federal grants specifically, we need six weeks before the due date before we even consider taking a client for a state or federal grant. Because over the course of years that we have written state or federal grants, six weeks is about the amount of time it takes from beginning to end to make those grants happen and be successful. It's not because it takes six weeks to write the application or to answer the questions. That's not the part that is time consuming. It takes weeks to get some of the, um, some of the systems registered for in grants.gov. It takes weeks sometimes to get partnership agreement letters written, signed back, especially if it's during the summer and you're working with like a school system and people aren't in the office. And, there's just a lot of things that happen. If you're trying to get quotes for a budget, if you're trying to get certain certifications, those types of things, we have found that it really, we have to have six weeks from the due date if we're gonna be successful. So if someone calls me, literally just had somebody call me this week, we need you to write a grant for us. It's due July the, I think it was July the 10th, right? So it's just over six weeks, but we are already booked here at Funding for Good with clients and wouldn't be able to start that project for at least two weeks, which only gives us four weeks to do the project. And so I had to say, I'm sorry, but we don't have enough time for that. So knowing that as an organization, that is a must have for us, right? Like we need six weeks to do a state or federal grant successfully with a client. Um, another thing that is a must have for us, we want to make sure that, um, that when we are writing grants that the client understands we are not responsible for the grant management after the grant is submitted. If they receive an award and there are reports due at the end or there is data tracking that has to happen, we will help them establish how to track the data before the grant is submitted. We will help them put the processes in place to track that data, but we will not be the ones tracking it because again, we are not in their offices. We don't work on site, we are employees. So it wouldn't be reasonable for us to say, yes, we'll handle that, right? So if a client comes to us and says, we need full wraparound services, we need to make sure you can do this, this, and this, if grant reporting is part of that, then I know that's not an ideal client for me because we don't offer that service, right? Um, what else? Oh working in someone else's office. So I have been employed since 2009 as a grant writer for my business. 2014 went full-time with that. And since then, if anyone wants me to work for them in their office, then I charge a lot more because I don't wanna be working in someone else's office. I wanna work in my office. So I've never had a client who insisted on it, but for me, it would be an upcharge, which is usually enough of an upcharge that people don't want to pay it, um, because I don't want to do that, right? That's something that's one of my must-haves. I would prefer to work in my office. So those are some things that I have learned as a consultant that make my life easier, 
make my clients' success greater, helps me with my communication and expectations with clients from the beginning. These are the things we do. These are the things we don't do. This is how we operate. This is how we bill. This is our communication style, all that sort of thing. So I would encourage you as you start to work on your business, you start to work on um, cultivating new clients that you're thinking through what are your must haves. Sometimes those things are going to be communication related, right? Maybe it's we don't accept calls after 5 p.m. or we don't take calls on the weekends or I mean, I don't know. It could be anything. I have one particular person that I outsource some work to and she handles all of my work on Wednesdays. So I know if she's working on any of my stuff, it's on a Wednesday. So if I have a question for her, I can send it, but I'm not anticipating a reply back until Wednesday. And if I have anything I need for her to do, I'm going to get it to her before Wednesday so she can do it. Right. That's just an expectation that's been created and communicated. And that's how we that's how we roll. So as you go about working on consulting and you think about what are your ideal clients, think about what you do want to do and what you don't want to do and make sure that you are laying the groundwork for that and the expectations for that up front very clearly so your clients have realistic expectations of your relationship going forward. <music>